Mount Tabor family and friends, welcome to our service. We are glad you are with us. With the Zulu greeting, Sabonani, we see all of you. We respect all of you. We value all of you. You all are important to us. Church weekly events, spiritual formation classes are held Monday through Thursday on Zoom only. On Monday, men, 7 p.m. Tuesday, children at 6.30 p.m. and youth at 7 p.m. Wednesday, midday study and fellowship, which is held at 11 a.m. in person and, and, and online. Wednesday, general adult at 7 p.m. and Thursday, women at 7 p.m. Upcoming events. For Tuesday, April the 23rd, prayer conference call at 11 a.m. Saturday, prayer conference call at 3 p.m. Mount Tabor movie night at 4 p.m. Sunday, Sunday study at 9.15 a.m. and Sunday worship at 10 a.m. Official kickoff of Pastor's 30th anniversary, we will have Mount Tabor movie night where the featured movie is Shirley, a biopic about Shirley Chisholm and her bid for the Democratic presidential nomination. Popcorn, pizza, and soft drinks will be provided, but if you have a favorite movie snack, please bring it. Movie review will take place immediately following viewing, which will be held on April the 27th from 4 to 7 p.m. in Mount Tabor Baptist Church Fellowship Hall. April birthdays will be celebrated with a digital birthday calendar poster on Sunday, April the 28th. If you have a birthday in May, please send a current picture including the day of birth to be included in our digital birthday calendar by May the 23rd to Mount Tabor Operations at LL.com. Women's Day will be held Sunday, May the 5th. 2024 at 10 a.m. The theme is Amazing Grace, God's Unmerited Favor. We will have a pain and praise on Saturday, May the 4th, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. There is a donation of $20 for lunch and paint supplies. Our guest preacher for Women's Day will be Dr. Lois Blakey Page, co-pastor of New Canon Worship Center. 
Also, your voice is needed for the Women's Day Choir. Rehearsals will take place after worship over the next two Sundays. And our Women's Day colors are purple and white. Celebrating Pastor's 30th anniversary with a Christian cookout been held from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. with food, music, and fun at Armor House Meadowview Park at 4001 Clarendon Road, Richmond, Virginia, 23223. This is located off Creighton Road and behind Arthur Ashe Elementary. Please confirm your attendance by May the 10th by either leaving a message at church or with your zone diggings. Wear Mount Tabor gear or your zone colors and represent Pastor Ponda proudly. Just a reminder, if you are not feeling well for any reason, please refrain from attending an in-person service and join us on Zoom, Facebook, or YouTube. It's not too late to get your flu shot and COVID vaccine because COVID, flu, and RSV are still present. Please keep your mask with you. Let's take care of ourselves and one another. Follow us on our social media platforms, which are Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. If you need prayer, leave us your prayer requests by calling 804-643-0903 and select option three. Our prayer line is here for your support. Let us know, do you desire to have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Are you seeking spiritual growth or renewal or would you like to join the Mount Tabor family? We want to hear from you, so call 804-643-0903 or visit mymtbc.org. Select the Accept Christ button at the top right corner. Ways to give tithes and offerings. You can use Giblify and go to Mount Tabor Baptist Church, Richmond, Virginia. You can go online to our website, which again is www.mymtbc.org and use PayPal, debit card, or credit card. Or you can mail your check to Mount Tabor Baptist Church at 2011 Fairmount Avenue, Richmond, Virginia, 23223 to give support to reach people for God, equip believers in the faith, and send disciples to serve. Mount Tabor family and friends, let us enter our time of worship. Verses 33 to 34. 
and it reads, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds amongst the people. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Yeah. Yeah. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thanking you for allowing us to be in this space to worship your holy name. Not of our name, but to worship you. Thank you for allowing us to see everyone with a face of joy and looking upon you, dear God. Now, dear God, we thank you. To come into this place and touch everyone's heart, touch everyone's mind, and bless the mighty man of God as he gives the message of your holy We just say thank you, dear God. We love you, dear Lord. And we just want to just uplift you as we enter this space here, we on social media, dear God. All these things that we pray. In the precious name of the Lord, Jesus. Amen. Morning, Marjorie. Morning. Our first hymn this, first hymn this morning is 375, I Must Tell Jesus. 375, I Must Tell Jesus.
being a leader. Showing us the way to heaven. We thank you, God, for your only begotten Son that you have chosen this day to be our God and our leader. Thank you. Thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you every one for moving the obstacles out of our way and replace them with a new way, a brand new way. Yes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. We say amen. Thank <laughs> you. 
Tech away from the train to slow down before you drive the car. to return with me from scriptures to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. Reading from the Jewish National Version of the Bible. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offering. And by faith, Abel still speaks even though he's dead. Amen. Amen. I want to continue our year long theme and focus on growing time and today continue our growth focus in Hebrews chapter 11 using the theme growing in faith. I, I make the assumption that it is our desire to grow in our faith. I, I make the assumption that regardless of how mature we are in our walk with God that, that we all recognize that we have some room to grow. There's some things that we can do better, particularly with our faith. Yes. And again, through this series, we'll explore ways that we can grow in our faith by looking at those whose names are listed in what many call the hall of faith. And that's what Hebrews 11 is referred to. And last time, as we closed out the message, we stated that we can learn from others. Amen. We, we can benefit from the experiences of those around us as well as those who have gone before us. Can, can I get you to pause for just a moment and, and reflect on somebody who impressed you, somebody who blessed you, somebody you, you just saw their walk with God, you saw their faith and, and it helped you even in your own life. Can you just reflect for a moment on those who have helped you along the way? You can learn some stuff just by watching them and experiencing their presence and, 
and see how they dealt with the challenges that came their way simply because they had faith. And I would declare that we're here only because of those who went before us and, and trusted God enough that, that, that they made room to allow God to work in their lives so that we could be here today. And so today I want to study one of the personalities found in Hebrews chapter 11 and see what we can learn from their experience and their story. But looking again at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4, and I, I want to use a subtitle if I can and, and ask this question. Are you able, A-B-L-E, to be able, A-B-E-L, and trust God? Are you able, A-B-L-E, to be able, A-B-E-L, and trust God? Amen. Amen. Yeah. But looking at Hebrews 11, for my faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks even though he's dead. But what, what do we know about Abel? How did he get his name on the list? How, how was he inducted, if you will, into the Hall of Faith? What did he do that, that, that qualified him to be included in this chapter with all of these prominent names? I, I think that's a good question. So, so before we look at Hebrews 11, 4, we, we need to go to the source and see what information we can glean from, from, from the source. And, and so I want to invite you to turn again in your scripture. Don't you go to the series, you got to keep your Bibles open, you got to keep your scriptures close to you. Because we're going to need to look at some things. So turn to Genesis chapter 4, we're going to read verses 1 through 10. Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 10. I'm again, reading from the New International Version of the Bible. Man, I, your page is turning, and your fingers swiping, and, and even online, I, I see some, some stuff moving online. I, I can see online too, amen. 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 I'm, I'm watching you online. I'm watching you. Okay, Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. Adam made love to his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, With the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Later, she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now, Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord, and Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you. But you must rule over it. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out to the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Mm. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied, am I my brother's keeper? The Lord said, what have you done? Listen! Your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Listen. Your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. When we look at Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 10, we, we know that the focus of the text isn't Abel, but his older brother. Four names are listed in these verses, but only one ends up in Hebrews chapter 11. I, I, we, can, we can stop right there and, and maybe even celebrate. I said four names were listed, but only one 
ends up in Hebrews 11. We, we can stop right there and note that being last doesn't mean being left out. Right. That's because you, know, you, 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 you were first in line. Just because your name wasn't called first, that doesn't mean you'll be left out. See, Abel was the second child of Adam and Eve. And again, Abel wasn't the focus of the story, but, but had what would become a crucial role. And Abel kept flocks. He, he was a shepherd. He, he took care of the sheep of the family. He, he was out there in the field working and taking care of the animals. And, and in the course of time, the text tells us, Abel brought an offering to God. It is described as the fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. In the New Living Translation, the offering is described as the best portion. Amen. See, this offering is recognized as the first recorded offering or sacrifice in the Bible. No other time that this been done, but, but, but this was the first time, and, and that means that we can assume that some kind of relationship existed between God and Abel's family that led to this offering, this sacrifice. In, in order for him to bring the fat portion, meant that he had to slaughter one of his sheep. And we can further assume that Abel had a personal relationship with God that led him to offer the quality of sacrifice that he gave. Which meant that, that he could have taken inventory of all that he was responsible for and made a different choice. But, but the text tells us he brought the best. He, he brought the best that, that he had. The, the best portion. He, he gave the Lord his best. Can, can I get y'all to say that with me? He gave the Lord, gave the Lord his, best. his best. If you worship it with us all night, just put that in the chat. He gave the Lord his best. That, that, that meant that he made up his mind that, that when I give to God, I am particular about what I give to God. Because I recognize that what I give to God has a reflection on who I am. Classified as the best? No, I'm just asking what I'm asking. <laughs> See, his offering reveals a sense of God awareness and appreciation for what God has done in his life. We can never repay God for all that God does for us. Yeah. We can never outgive God. And him like say, you can't be God given no matter how hard to try. But we can't pay God for all that. The, I mean, that next breath that God gives us, we, there's no way that we can quantify it. So because of his relationship he gave, the Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. Can, can I get you to look at that again? The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. In other words, there was a connection between the giver and the gift. And there was a connection between the person who gave and, and, and what he gave. You know, and there was not a separation. They, they were connected. And, and again, you know, Abel recognized that as I give, that, that there's a reflection on who I am. And therefore, I'm going to provide my I do have to caution us that the criteria for God's response to Abel's offering is not explained. Yeah. Yeah. It just tells us what God did. Yeah. In other words, God didn't say, let me, this is the criteria that I'm looking for. Now, if you do this, then I'll respond in this way. That, that's not in the text. And, and as I kept looking and studying, one of the things I found out is that there are many opinions of why God did what God did, but, but the fact of the matter is that God did what God did. And God determined in God's own mind but how God would respond to what Abel did. But a possible hint could be the way God connects the giver and the gift. 
2 Corinthians 8, 12 remind us, for if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. Did, did you hear the wall of the If the willingness is there. In other words, God, if you're willing to do something for God, then God says, I'm good with that. You know? See, God is able to come into us test God sometimes, and God knows my heart. You know? Can I tell you that God really does know our hearts? I mean, we make that statement as if we're trying to say, say something about the reality that God really knows our motivation. God knows the criteria that we use. God knows the, you know, the priorities that are available in our lives. And God knows where we are on God's on our legs. God knows where God is on our legs. That would suggest that what makes a gift acceptable to God is the heart of the giver. So how's your heart? Can we do a heart check right now? How's your heart? I, I know we can put some emojis up and have some hearts you know, in the chat, but, but how's your heart? So God was pleased with Abel's gift. But Abel's brother reacted differently. In, in fact, he, he extended an invitation to Abel to go out to the field. And, and, and I guess if I would stop there, I would just assume that this is just two brothers going to hang out together. But going to spend some time together. But the text tells us he invited him out to the field and killed him. His brother's response to God's affirmation of his gift was to kill him. Yeah. I said his brother's response yeah. to what God did yeah. was to kill him. Yeah. Do you not know that there are people that will attack your body or your character because they don't like what God is doing in your life? Yeah. Somebody's watching you and seeing how God is blessing you, how God is making a way for you, how God is putting some stuff in your life, and they will attack you because you your life. You do all that. <laughs> and you don't have nothing to do with what God is doing in your life. See, it's because of the deficiency or shortcoming in their life between them and God that they react by taking their frustration out on us. It almost reminds me of uh, some folks who are running for the highest office in the land uh, and because of the stuff in their own life, they keep lashing out at other folks. And maybe they ain't you know, going on in us. Instead of lashing out with us, thinking that everybody else is trying to get you. They, they react by taking on their frustrations on others. And, and you know what that means? Don't take it personally. It, it has nothing to do with your issue with God. I'm talking about how we grow in our faith. Because sometimes we'll find ourselves dealing with stuff that will hurt us and harm us and challenge us and frustrate us. And we're wondering, what, what, what's going on? And don't take it personally. It just goes with it. Even when you walk with God, the road is not always going to be easy. But when you are growing in faith, you have the awareness that even though it may not be easy, God will make a way somehow. Happen. The closest thing they can come on, you know, the cook messes up the meal and you lash out at the server. <laughs> uh, amen, somebody. Amen. I remember back home when, when, when the fares would go up on the buses and the folks were taking out on the ride. And how many times do we take stuff out on people when, when they aren't responsible? There's somebody else making decisions. You know, we don't have a record of Abel speaking in Genesis 4. Did you know that? We haven't heard from him at all. 
know that he was by the taking of his life. Come on. He, he didn't say a word in Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 to 10, but he wasn't silenced by the taking of Abel's blood, cried out from the ground to the Lord. Was it the only recorded communication we get from him? His blood cried out, but not, not with his brother. As in, why did you do this to me? But, but his, his cry was to God. See, this is the, the record that informs how, how Abel made the list in, in Hebrews 11. That, that when we look at what happened in Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 10, it, it kind of shows a series of events. And, and we're still wondering, well, what did Abel do? would qualify him to show up in Hebrews chapter 11. Yeah, yeah. Because when the revised edition comes out, some of us might want our name in it also. <laughs> and, and so let me share you know, some of my observations that, that might help us to be included on this. The first thing I would share is don't talk about it, be about it. Yeah. Don't, don't talk about it, be about it. Yeah. See, see, the text says by Faith under Hebrews 11 before. By faith, Abel brought a better offering than Cain. See, that, that, that was the assessment of God, not Abel or his brother. God determined that what Abel did was better than what his brother did. But God thought that see, Abel wasn't trying to do a comparison again. Abel wasn't trying to upstage his brother. Abel was just doing what he did. But when you have a walk with God, that, let's do what you do. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Don't go don't, 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 don't talking about it. Just be about it. I, I know it's easy to talk about how great faith we are. I, I know it's easy to talk about you know, all the things that, that, that God is able to do through us. But, but the, the more important thing is if we're allowing God to work in our life. Don't, don't talk about how much you love, just love. Yeah, don't, don't talk about how much you serve, just serve. Yeah, don't, don't talk about it, be about it. Yeah, yeah. See, Abel teaches us that it's not what we say, but what we do that matters. His actions made a difference and demonstrated his faith and trust in God. See, he, 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 it was his actions. He, he wasn't commended because he was victimized. He, he wasn't commended because God felt sorry for him. He was commended because he was faithful to God. He, he just went and did what God wanted him to do. So, so that's the first thing I would share with us. Don't, don't talk about it. Be about it. But like, secondly, real faith extends beyond our lifetime. And that's, what, that's what Abel teaches us. That real faith extends beyond our lifetime. See, because he was faithful, his faith extended beyond his life. Look at Hebrews 4 again. And by faith, Abel still speaks even though he's dead. Come on, that means that, that if you listen, you can still hear Abel speaking. Yeah. Come on, Abel still not because he, he, he was trying to prove something, but but by, by faith that, that something that transpired caused his foot, though his life was taken, his voice was still heard. Yeah. Is there anyone whose voice you still hear? They may not be with us right now, but you still hear their voice? Yes. Yes. Come on, baby. That, that when you look back at their life and you look at their faithfulness and you look at how they walk with God and you look at how they serve, when you look at their testament, when you look at their journey, it, it, it speaks to you. Come on, I just wish we could call some names right now. There's some folks that blessed us because of their faithfulness. My faith. Still speaks, even though he's dead. That, that, that means that, that somebody can take your life and, 
and you can still have a word. I, I, I believe, you know, something happened this month, you know, back in 1968, that, that, that they thought that if they, they murdered him on a balcony, they, they could stop his word. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., they, they thought that if we could kill the dreamer, we could kill the dreamer. But by faith, because he was faithful, his faith extended beyond his life. But I had to ask myself the question. It, it said, it still speaks. So I wonder, what does it say? Yeah. <laughs> is, is that a, 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 a credible question? If his faith is still speaking, what is it saying? What, 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 what is it saying? Well, on one commentator put it this way, it might seem that Abel received a poor reward for his acceptance by God when his brother killed him. But the writer is impressed with the timeless character of Abel's faith. It was through this that he is still speaking. The earliest demonstration that death, even violent death, cannot prevent the message of faith. The main thought is that, that the kind of faith which Abel exercised can communicate over the whole stretch of time. So what was he saying? S -s -s Several references. Matthew 23, 35 says, And so upon you will come all the righteous blood, righteous blood, righteous blood that has been shed from the blood of the righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who you murdered between the temple and the altar. Luke eleven fifty one. 51, From the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who was killed between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, this generation will be held responsible for it all. But what is he saying? That as his voice was crying out, his voice was asking for God to intervene. Yeah. His voice was saying that injustice had been done. And there was a cry for justice to occur. And it's, that, it's a voice that declares that injustice has been experienced and requires a remedy. Come on, how many times have you been wrong and wonder if anybody noticed? How many times has somebody offended you? How many times has somebody messed with you? How many promotions have been and gone past you? And nobody seems to be concerned about it except for what this is telling us that when we are faithful, our voice still carries out. We may not even be here right now, but 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 our voice will carry forth. And that means that some of us been able to rise to position not because of what we've done but because of somebody else's voice they, they, they're gone but because of somebody else's voice they, they, they're not here anymore but because of somebody else's voice that god is still hearing because Abel didn't, his blood didn't cry out to just anybody his blood cried out to god and justice has been done. Yeah. And he teaches us that real faith stands beyond. They cried out, did it make a difference? Final thing I would consider and share with us is this trust God. Yes, God. Yes, yes. 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 Abel teaches us yeah. to trust God. We may not always be sure of what life will bring us, but we have the assurance that God will work in our lives. Yeah, thank you. Be not dismayed. Whatever be time, God will take care of you. God will take care of us, and God will right all wrongs. How did God respond? The initial response was to banish the offender. The, the initial response was to deal with the one that was responsible for the crime. So even though Abel wasn't around, God said, I got this. Can, can, can anybody stand with assurance on God's promise that God said, I got this? I know you may be frustrated because you didn't get what you thought you deserved, but, but when God says, I got this, 
And that gives us a sense of peace that, that we don't have to worry about it because God promised. Yes. Yes. But the other thing is that God holds offenders accountable for their crimes. Oh, you, you may be saying, now wait a minute, I'm, I'm, I'm watching the news every day and, and, and I see some folk that I know have done this, that, and the other. And I'm wondering, why are they still able to do this, that, and I, I, I'm watching them. And I'm watching them sell Bible. I mean, I'm watching them sell speakers. I mean, I'm watching them. I, I'm, I'm doing this. I, I see, and I'm just wondering, why, why, why? When Pookie just crossed the street the wrong way and he's locked up, I'm wondering why. Why? If God handles these things. Why? We don't always know God's time. But God holds offenders accountable. And Abel trusted God to take care of it. And therefore, he was able to focus on doing what he was supposed to do. And not worry about what was done to him. He stayed focused on giving God his best and trusting God with the rest. That I means that we don't always have to argue our case. Now, come on now, how many of us just got to tell our side? How many of us just got to make our point? How many of us want to make sure our voice is heard because we are not going to sit for this injustice? Exodus 14, 14 reminds me, the Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. In other words, God's got this. I know you don't like the way things happen, but God's got this. I know it was a great injustice, but God's got this. I know you're disappointed that they seem to have got away with it, but God's got this. Just stay calm. You don't have to get yourself all flustered up. Just stay calm. God will take care of you. Don't get yourself worked up. God will take care of you. When you stay calm, you might make somebody nervous. Come on. Amen. I remember when I was working at one of the companies in town, and, and they told me my position had been eliminated. And I was on the paper, and I said, all right, I see you. Well, I can put that one off. And they said, I know mean, they don't do that now, but they said, you know, you still have so many weeks to go before you know, you're out of here. And I just went back and started doing what I was doing. And I, I, some person looking over my shoulder. Why, why is he not reacting? Why is he not throwing things around? You know, why, why is he not upset? My job. What to do, my job? And know that God will take care of you. God gave you the job. And God will give you another job. I mean, I didn't have to get upset because of the decision that had been made. I didn't have to get flustered because of the decision that had been made. All I had to do was to put my trust in God. God will.
and to the sprinkled blood which speaks forgiveness instead of crying out for vengeance like the blood of the Lord. Mm. Let God work it out. For God has a way. So what does it tell us? How did his name get in the book? In the Hall of Faith. He learned this. Don't talk about it. But be it. We learned that real faith extends beyond our lifetimes. And ultimately our responsibility is this. Trust God. Yes. Yeah. We're talking about growing in our faith. Mm. Growing in our faith. That's right. Eternal God, we thank you. And some of us, even now, are in some stuff. We've experienced some stuff. We've prayed about it. And we've been wondering, God, what are you going to do about it? Some of us have been hurt, tampered with, messed over, violated. And we're wondering, because you said you would take care of us and never leave us over Satan. And, and we're just wondering, you God, what you gotta do. You help us to God to put our trust in you and know that everything will be all right. Oh, no, no. That in your timing, you do what you need to do. But in the meantime, help us not to talk about but just be about doing what you've called us to do. And ultimately help us to trust you in every aspect of our lives. This is our prayer we offer in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. The invitation to discipleship is extended. And we invite you that if you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sin, you don't know him as your Savior, you don't have a relationship with the Lord, this is a great opportunity. You don't have to wait till next week, next month, next year. You can pray into this right now and have that relationship with God through Jesus Christ. We invite you simply to say yes, Lord. And receive the love that God has for you. Some of us are trying to fix it up before we turn it over. But, but this is just like those, those commercials you see when you, know, you need to get rid of a house just, just as is. Just, just turn yourself over as is to the Lord. And God knows what to do with it. Because when God gets finished with making you over, some folk won't even recognize you. But it starts with you saying yes, Lord. And then we invite you that if you're not a part of the Mount Tabor Church, that this is an opportunity to become a part. So if you're worshiping with us in the sanctuary, as the deacons are standing, we ask you to see one of the deacons that will pray with you. So it's our to accept Jesus as your Savior, become a part of the Mount Tabor Church. Let's move right up to one of the deacons right now. If you're worshiping with us online, you made a decision to accept Jesus as your Savior and a desire to become a part of the Mount Tabor Church, wherever you are. We need to know. So we pray with you and pray for you. Two ways you can let us know by calling us 804 643 0903 and leave a message. Or you can go to our website, mymtbc.org. Top right hand corner will put the accept. Christ, but click on that. That'll send you information directly to me. We'll be able to respond back to you. Let us pray for those who are making decisions in the right now. Lord God, we offer our prayers that for those who are out there wrestling with life and trying to do life by themselves, even now, Lord God, by your Holy Spirit, meet them where they are. Put your arms around them and let them know that they don't have to be by themselves. But there's some others that can come alongside of them and walk with them that we might grow together. Bless them now in their decision-making process. 
May they not be distracted by the things that are around them. But may they be focused on your invitation and relationship with you. This prayer we offer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's offering time. And yet we thank God for the opportunity to give as God has blessed us. We ask that you would give and that we might continue our work of reaching people for God, equipping believers in the faith, and sending disciples to serve. Let us pray and ask God's blessings upon the gift and we give them. Eternal God, we thank you again for this opportunity to give. But we know that without you, we could not give. But with you, we can do all things. So even now, we might ask the gifts are being given, even those who have already been given. We ask that you bless them, multiply them, and use them that they might transform lives. And for the one who has given, may they be like a that they too can trust God for their gifts. In Jesus' name we offer this prayer. Amen. 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 I should be coming around and receiving your gifts. Again, you can give me that trunk of gift of five. You can go to our website, myfgbc.org. You can donate right there. You can go to Sanctuary or you're worshiping with us online. You can mail a check to the church at 2011. Richmond, Virginia, two three two two three. Let us give this God has blessed us. Amen. Amen. We serve the mighty good God. Amen. opportunities for ministry that extend beyond the walls. It's not that Jesus bless us and keep us in so many ways. Let's look to the Lord as we close out this time of worship. Again, dear God, we thank you for your many blessings. And our desire, dear God, is to grow. To grow in our faith. So help us get God. That we might be better today than we were yesterday. And that even today might be not as good as tomorrow. Keep us as we close out this time of worship. But never leave us. But in Jesus' name we offer this prayer. Amen. 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 Amen.